Well, we're jumping back into John's Gospel. And this is the first video that I'm shooting in John's Gospel since 2022. So if you want to go and uh, look at the earlier videos, you can just search them on this channel and look at all the previous passages that we've looked at together. The key thing we've seen in John's Gospel so far is that John is giving us evidence, evidence all about Jesus that calls for belief in Jesus. And for those who believe in Jesus, that belief leads to life through him. So throughout this book, we see we're looking out for evidence, signs, wonders, uh, important facts about Jesus, all the evidence that we're given about Jesus. And all of that evidence is calling us to believe in Jesus so that we might have life through him. The key passage at the end of John's Gospel that shows this to us is John 20, verse 30 and 31. So go and read those verses to see how uh, John wants us to see the evidence, the signs that Jesus did to believe in him and to find life in his name. Now, the sermon I preached from this section I called The Danger of Getting It Wrong. Because sadly, in this section, we see a whole lot of people who have seen the evidence about Jesus, but they choose not to believe. And we see a whole bunch of different responses to Jesus. And for those who remain in their disbelief, in their unbelief, they will not receive the life that is found in Jesus alone. Helpful context in John's Gospel for this specific section uh, you can go and look at John 1, uh, verse 10 and 11, where we are told that although Jesus came to the world that he had made, the world that he had made didn't recognize him. They would not receive him. And that's what we see happening in this section. You can also go and read the very well-known John 3, verse 16, but don't stop there. Go all the way to verse 21. And we see specifically in uh, verse 18, uh, those who do not believe in him. In verse 20, those who don't want their deeds exposed by him and therefore hate Jesus. And we see that playing out in this section. And then also this whole big section started in John chapter 5. And it all revolves around the event of the paralyzed man being healed on the Sabbath. And by John 5 verse 18, we hear that the Jews in Jerusalem were seeking a way to kill Jesus. So that context is all very helpful just to understand what's going on in this section. Now every passage in the Bible uh, has a structure and some of the hard work is to try and figure out the structure of any given passage and that structure will reveal the emphasis and then the emphasis of the passage must be the emphasis that we teach when we're teaching God's Word. And there are a number of different tools that you can use to, to see the structure, to see the emphasis. And I think the key tool in this section is the tool of looking at the different characters. And Jesus is obviously the central character in John's Gospel, and he is the central character in this section. So have a look at everything that we're told about Jesus in this section. As you just look at uh, the different characters, you see Jesus very prominently at the center of the story. Uh, but we see some of the confusion about him, uh, which we'll look at in more detail. But some say he's a good man. Others say, no, he deceives the people. Uh, people were very confused as to who Jesus was. Another key character throughout John's Gospel, particularly from chapter 5 onwards, and now in this section, are the Jewish leaders. This, uh, at a Jewish festival. The Jews, um, including their leaders here. So we'll see uh, some of the interaction of those, that character, those characters, uh, and see their response to Jesus. We also see in this section, Jesus' brothers. And then the final important character or group of people is the crowds who function very much as a character in this section. And this whole section is showing us people who judged incorrectly who Jesus is 
And it's calling us to judge correctly who Jesus is. So by looking at the incorrect responses to Jesus, we can then work out what the correct response to him should be. So one of the incorrect responses we see is that they were looking for a way to kill him. This key idea of belief, calling people to believe in Jesus, tragically we see that Jesus' own brothers did not believe in him. And so that idea of belief comes out. And this idea of evidence that we're given here, uh, we see Jesus, the disciples, the Jesus brothers say to him, uh, go to Judea so that they may see the works. Uh, that is a re repeated idea. Um, the things you're doing, show yourself to the world. And then Jesus says, I testify. So he himself is giving evidence about himself and about those around him. Uh, from chapter 5, we saw this one miracle, uh, the healing of the man. Uh, the, the man who was healed on the Sabbath. And that is a, a key sign that we're shown in John's gospel. And because Jesus was doing these things, as I said, by the end of chapter 5, we see that the Jews are to kill him. That's why they're looking to kill him. We're also told in chapter 5 because he claimed to be God, making himself equal with God. So they saw him as blaspheming. Another character in John's gospel is what Jesus calls the world. And the very famous John 3.16 speaks to this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. But here, a very key verse in this section, uh, Jesus says, The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify that its works are evil. So we see that one response to Jesus is to hate him. The Jews are looking for a way to kill him. His brothers don't believe in him. All of these are a response of hatred towards Jesus, not believing that he is who he says he is. Now, some massive irony we see in this section is uh, we're told that it was the Jewish feast of tabernacles. Uh, now, for context of tabernacles, you can go and read Leviticus, um, Leviticus 23, or Deuteronomy 16. Uh, in both those chapters, we are given Old Testament context for this uh, festival of tabernacles. And the festival of ta tabernacles was when God's people were meant to live in tents together for a whole week to remember God's faithfulness, looking after them while they were in the wilderness for 40 years. And during those years, God tabernacled with them. And they could point to the tabernacle and say, our God is with us. Now, the great irony here is that during this festival of tabernacles, they had missed the fact that Jesus was tabernacling with them. In John 1 verse 14, we're told that the word became flesh and made his dwelling with us. More literally, the word became flesh and tabernacled with us. But during this festival of tabernacles, uh, they, they were meant to point to Jesus and say, our God is with us, but they missed him. The whole section from John 7 to the end of chapter 8, it all takes place during this Feast of Tabernacles, this week-long feast. And we're told here that not until halfway through the feast, so uh, three or four days into the feast, uh, Jesus went into the temple courts and began to teach. And we're told there that the people were amazed. It's one response to Jesus, they're amazed. And Jesus says to them, I did one miracle and you're all amazed. But the shocking truth is that just to be amazed at Jesus is not enough. The miracle that they saw happening wasn't enough to do the miracle in their own hearts of showing them who Jesus is. They still didn't judge correctly who Jesus is. And so we see throughout this section that Jesus teaches them. He wants them to judge correctly, so he tells them truth. Uh, we're told he began to teach them. 
he tells them about his very own teaching. He said to them, so there's a whole lot of uh, teaching that Jesus gives because he doesn't want them to be looking for ways to kill him, to not believe in him, to be very confused about him. They didn't know, is he a good man? No, he deceives the people. How on earth is he teaching the way he teaches? They're super confused about him. So Jesus teaches them because he wants them to judge correctly who he is. He wants them to see that he reveals God's glory. So again, you can have a look at John 1 verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. Jesus revealed God's glory to the world. And yet, these people missed it. And so then Jesus points to Moses, who they loved so much. Uh, Moses, who had given them the law. And he shows them, which he told them already back in chapter 5, if they really understood and listened to Moses, they would know that Moses was talking about him. Uh, but then he speaks um, about the law that was given through Moses, and he specifically uh, focuses in on the Sabbath and their understanding of uh, how to keep the Sabbath. And he shows that even on the Sabbath, they could circumcise their sons, but now they are judging Jesus for healing a whole man's body on the Sabbath. And then Jesus says uh, this very key verse right at the end of this section, stop judging by mere appearances and judge correctly. Jesus wants them to make the correct judgment about who he is. He wants them to listen to his teaching because it comes from God. And he says, anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out or know. Uh, that's an important word in John's gospel. Uh, we see it in chapter 1, verse 10, where the world did not know him. But Jesus says, well, if, if you choose to do God's will, you will know me. You'll know that my teaching is from God. And he is seeking to bring glory to God. All of this showing that he is a man of truth. All of this evidence about Jesus is true. And it calls for belief in Jesus so that people might have life through him. But tragically, this section is showing the wrong response to Jesus. All the wrong responses. People are trying to kill him. They're not believing in him. They're confused about him. So Jesus said, stop judging by mere appearances and instead judge correctly. Now, the previous section ended with a correct judgment of who Jesus is. So if you have a look at 6 verse 68, we hear Peter's call saying, where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. And this section is calling us to judge correctly. Judge like Peter. See in Jesus that there's nowhere else to go. He's the one who gives this life that we so desperately need. He's the one who came uh, to expose evil so he testifies that our works are evil but he also came so that he could deal with evil he came speaking God's word he is the word of God the word became flesh and if we listen to his words in him is life that life was the light of mankind but as we see here the people continue to walk in darkness and John is holding out these wrong responses because he wants us to judge correctly who Jesus is. All the evidence is there. The call is to believe so that we might have life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have life. Don't respond like all of these in this story, but rather learn from their wrong response and make the right judgment about who Jesus is. Well, God bless as you dig in further. Thank you.